Welcome back to the Missoula Podcast. Stephen Ressett here. It is Tuesday. You know what that means. Another great episode from somebody in Missoula that's making a huge impact. It is March. And if you're like my family, March is for hoops, state tournaments this week. And then later on this month, we got NCAA championships, March Madness. So there's no better time than to ask on our guest today, Tyler Hobbs head basketball coach at Sentinel High School. He is awesome. I've known him for many, many years. Such a unique man from his story, playing with the Grizz, to real estate, to coaching. He has such a great impact on this community. And uh, we talk a lot about hoops, which what's better than that? I'm excited for you to listen to this episode. Thank you for joining us. Here's another episode of the Missoula Podcast. When did you know that you wanted to be get into coaching? What, what, how'd you make that decision? Um, naturally, just immediately, right when, right when, uh, right when I got out of college, I knew I was going to get involved somehow. You know, I was going to school for teaching, so um, yeah, so I was able to, you know, start down that path just from my degree because I was going to, I was going to get into education, and um, but really, it's because I had amazing coaches growing up mm. and they kept me on the straight and narrow and <laughs> made sure I was, you know, a lot of conversations, you know, at, uh, you know, off the court, off the field of, you know, just, you know, making sure that I was, you know, taking care of my grades and, you know, my attendance and, um, as well as pushing me to, you know, to be a, a good athlete and should have just, it just kind of all fell into place. How, how'd you end up? I mean, you, played football in college and then you're coaching basketball. Mm -hmm. What was that transition? Like, did you, did you play, have a background in basketball? Yeah. I'm a, I'm a football player stuck in a, or a basketball player stuck in a football <laughs> player's body. <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did the whole deal man. I went to, I, I ran the AAU circuit in high school. I put a, mm -hmm. I love practicing hoops. Mm -hmm. I loved it. I love being in the gym. Uh, my sophomore year was like, I think it was, it was right around the time that the, uh, the gun came out, the shooting machine. Mm-hmm. And so we got one of those and that was like a big deal to get one of those machines because they were brand new and they're expensive. And so we got one of those at, uh, at my high school and I don't recall where are you from originally? Uh, Spokane, Washington. Okay. Yeah. West Valley high school, home of the Eagles. <laughs> uh, and, uh, yeah. And I just spent hours on that, on that shooting machine. I loved it. I loved it. I love seeing the ball go in the hoop, travel around all over the place. You know, my dream was to play, uh, play basketball. Um, and it just so happened that I was a little undersized, a little under athletic for, uh, for, for basketball and, um, ended up going the football route. How did the U of M get on your radar? I know Spokane's pretty close, but yeah. were there ever other offers or other opportunities for football? Yeah, I ended up having, uh, five offers. Um, but really, um, I wanted to be, I wanted to be a Grizz. Once that recruiting process started, um, Ty Gregorak, uh, everyone mm -hmm. familiar, with uh, with Coach Greg Rack, he he graduated from West Valley as well, so same high school. So we had kind of had that connection, you know. Um, and so he started recruiting me. I didn't even know I was good at football, honestly. My my um, my high school coach calls me in one day and he's like, "Hey, um, my high school football coach," um, and he played here too. Ironically enough, Craig Whitney in late eighties, early nineties. Okay. Um, and he says, Hey, I need to, I need you and your dad to come in tomorrow at, uh, after school. I was like, all right. Like about, about what, what, what I <laughs> like, do. Sorry. You start going through the process of like running back the last 48 hours or 72 hours. He's going, all right. Um, and I'm like, what's, what's it about coach? And he's like, I, I just need you and your dad to come in. And he left at that. And I was, I was sweating bullets. Yeah. Nerve wracking. Yeah. Four hours. Yeah. So, uh, so my dad and I come in, um, after school and he's got a stack of letters. It was back in the day when he still got recruiting letters. Mm -hmm. So he has a stack of letters from different colleges all over the place. And it's like, you're getting recruited for football. Like, see, I told you, you know, you glad you stuck with it because you have an opportunity now. Um, so that was pretty eye opening. I had no, I had no idea. What position did you play in high school? Uh, DN tight end. Okay. Yeah. Were, yeah. So when were you thinking, considering not playing football at some point? Is that why he was having that conversation? Yeah, with I you? tried to quit my uh, 
my after my freshman year. Really? Yeah. He calls me. He called me in um, uh, at the end of my freshman year, and there's still like two JV games left to be played. And I was on the freshman team, and he called me in and was like, "Hey, you know, we got a great opportunity. You know, we really like what you did this year, and uh, we want you to play the next two, the final two JV games." And I was like, "Nah, I'm all right." <laughs> That's cool. That's it's not for me. He was like, like, what? Like, here we are giving a kid an opportunity. And he's like, no, thanks. Um, and I told him I wasn't going to play the next year. And uh, I remember him. He's he, there was a picture. There was a picture of a Grizz player. I don't know who it was um, up on the walls. It's probably our uh, O-line coach, Rick Cool, who was also a Grizz. Um, and he says, see this? He's like, you have the ability and the talent to do this and I was like "Mm, I don't know all right thanks coach (laughs) and I just walked out that's wild and for whatever reason I decided to come back probably because I didn't want to hear about it at Thanksgiving from all my uncles that I quit football sure (laughs) makes sense what years were you with the Grizz uh 06 to 10 yeah some pretty good years yeah yeah Yeah. coach Houck's you know first tenure and yeah a couple national championship appearances yeah was that? So, I don't remember. Oh eight, oh nine. James Madison. One no, of James Furman. Madison was Furman. Right. No, 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 it was uh, uh, Rich, uh, Richmond, Richmond and uh, Villanova. Villanova ah, that's right. yeah, yeah, James Madison was a semi so That's right. Um, over in James Madison, okay. which was a sweet game. So, but, what was that like coming in, getting recruited to be at the University of Montana? I mean, what was it like coming into to that atmosphere during those years? Did you love it right away? Were, were you were you all in? Yeah, I mean, um, one, once I once I got into like the recruit, you know, by the time I became a you know a junior senior, I really developed a love for the game, especially Friday nights. You know, basketball, I love practicing, I love playing, I love doing everything, everything hoops. Football, it's like it's a grind for four days, you know, five wow. days, and then the icing on the cake is game day, and you know, the Friday night lights are pretty special. You know, it's. It's it's amazing. It still gives me chills just thinking about it. You know, any you know college game day. You know, Saturday morning, Saturday afternoons. It's incredible. Um, so yeah, once I, I mean, once I got over here and you know was you know, saw what the atmosphere was like, I was like, oh my gosh, this is incredible. I won four games in high school in four years, four total games. <laughs> so to see this, this program, I was like, if I'm gonna play this sport, I want to win. Yeah. I want to I want to taste of what that's like um but then you get over here and you red shirt like hey you're red shirt and i go dang what what does that mean yeah, you get a, you get to practice for a year and lift weights and get quicker and so i just just dove into that dove into that and then yeah you gotta you gotta climb your way up the ladder you know we're successful the grizz were successful it wasn't like any, you know, very few people were walking in and getting on the field right away. There right. was no transfer portal. Right. You know, there was, you know, you you walk in and you got to develop. You got two, three years of development before you see the field. Real quickly, way off subject, but as a former D1 athlete, how do you feel today about transfer portal, NIL? Good for the game? Bad for the game? Where, like, uh, from your perspective? I, I, think, I think it's good. Yeah, I do. Um, in the grand scheme of things, I do. I think there's, it's going to take some time to iron out the, you know, all the details, right. but um, who, who said that? I think I saw maybe like a post from Jason Carrier, Um said, you know, this is the first time that like, like things are, things have swung in favor of the athlete, the yeah. student athlete, mm-hmm. you know, and sure. There's some, there's some things, you know, where guys are chasing NIL money and, and, you know, the loyalty of, to their school is, you know, is gone. But at the same time, like there's also incredible opportunities for, for people who maybe don't get an opportunity at whatever school they got recruited to yeah, because they got, you know, either they just weren't, weren't at that level yet or, you know, playing out of position or got recruited over the top of or whatnot. There's now opportunity for them to go find a, find a home and, and play. Yeah. Uh, Grizz culture. What were some of those, impactful lessons that you brought out of that, that maybe is still impacting your life or maybe some of the things coach Howell can still you. I know he wasn't exactly your coach. I use your head coach, right, but right. you had position coaches. Um, what were some of those life lessons that came out of playing D one football for the Grizz? Uh, I got to grind through the adversity. 
right? Can't get too high. Can't get too low. You know, I mean, as adults, we all have, and you know, I got three kids and, you know, busy schedule wife that works and travels for work. And, you know, there's, there's, there's hard times, there's easy times and you just, you got to just keep pushing through and, you know, find the, find the positive and things. And, um, and then I think also just from a, a standpoint of preparation, I think our, you know, the Grizz were and coach Howick's preparation is unbelievable. Um, and I, 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 I try and take that into, you know, daily life and, um, you know, as well as coaching basketball now, you know, I think we're, I think our teams are always well-prepared, mm-hmm. you know, whether, whether we execute the game plan or not is, you know, is to be seen on game day. <laughs> all of us, we all have kids, you know, growing up, there's those times or those times as parents where we say something to our kids and we realize like, shoot, I sound just like my dad. He yeah. said to me, yeah. how often do you with your varsity girl say something and you're like, that's a Hauckism. That's something oh, yeah. I learned. Oh yeah. I'm sure that all happens the, all the time. All the time. <laughs> yeah. All the time. Uh, Coach Halco always said, um, you know, winning's hard, losing's easy. Just ask those guys. Mm-hmm. I mean, cause winning is hard. It, it's hard. Anyone, yeah. anyone can show up and, you know, lose a game, you know, anyone can just walk the dog and, you know, kind of put in a half hearted effort and not come out on top. Like when it's hard, you know, you gotta, you gotta sacrifice and do the things that are uncomfortable. And, um, so I, I, I use that. I can't, awesome. I can't, I can't get away well, from good that for you. One. If one day these, these girls are going to be moms, they're <laughs> yeah. going to be like, Hey, coach Hobbs always used to say <laughs> yeah, when yeah, it's hard, yeah. and it's going to be on a plaque. Coach Hobbs. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, now, were you going to become a teacher just to coach? Were you one of those guys? Or were you like, I really want to teach and invest in young people? Probably both, a little bit of both. Yeah. And I just, I didn't, I didn't really have a path. I, I had no, I mean, honestly, in, in high school, I had no real plans of like going to college. I was never on my radar. You know, these kids today are incredible. You know, they, they're doing all the things that they're supposed to do to try and get, you know, academic scholarships or get to the school that they want to get to. And they have these goals and these career paths, you know, lined out. Like I was just, I was just going to school and playing sports and having fun with my buds. Mm-hmm. Um, so I got here. I didn't really know. I, didn't, I really didn't know what to do. Um, but I knew that I had some awesome teachers and some awesome coaches and I knew that I love, you know, the sports world. And so I just kind of started down that path and Yeah. And where was your first teaching job? Um, oh my gosh, I was kind of all over. I stayed in Missoula. I was trying to, I was hopefully trying to get into Missoula. So I was a paraeducator. I worked mm-hmm. one-on-one with a special needs kid for, for a year, um, at, at Big Sky. And then my first full-time job was up in Columbia Falls. Yeah. Middle school keyboarding. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> Wild. I didn't know that. Middle school keyboarding in Columbia Falls. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How, how talk about, talk about a wild, wild environment. Yeah. Go spend a, a year in the middle school. <laughs> the place is wild. So and then where'd you go from there? Uh, then I went to Steve I, uh, and I was down at Steve I for two years as a high school business teacher. Uh, Cause mm-hmm. I got a, um, a marketing degree as well. Okay. So, um, high school business teacher as a head basketball coach, boys basketball coach for two years, assistant football coach with one of my good buddies now, Tiff Myers, I met him down there. He's now down in Texas coaching some big football, high school, mm. uh, Texas, uh, high school down by Houston. Crazy. Yeah. Um, and then that was my, that was my last stop. Then I got out of it, got out of teaching all together. So what was, what was that decision? Like, when did you come to that point? Obviously at the end of Stevensville, but how'd you know it wasn't for you? Um, you know, the PC answer or just the cold, hard truth, cold, hard truth. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a kid and I was broke. Yeah. I mean, um, we were open, we were open in the weight room. Uh, coach Myers and I were open in the weight room at six 30 in the morning. Um, you know, it was a 45 minute drive down there. I was still lived in Missoula. So I was out the door at five 30 in the morning. We'd coach for, you know, eight months out of the year. Um, you know, getting back home at eight o'clock and, you know, I was, I was out the door before my kid got up and I was home when he was in bed. And I was broke and doing it every day. Yeah. 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 So I was like, you know, something's got to, something's got to change here. Um, so yeah. So I took a leap of faith and jumped into this real estate business. Before we get into that, should we hit him with the power five? Sure. Go for it. Okay. You ready for some fast five power? Five? I, I change the name every time. It's yeah. actually seven questions. Seven questions. Okay. All right. Lay it on me. All right. Uh, being a Spokane guy, what was your first memory when you came to Missoula? Oh my gosh. My first memory coming to Missoula. 
um, probably probably hanging out with Kyle Ryan on my recruiting trip. Okay. Yeah. Did you get into some trouble? No. <laughs> None. Good answer. It's no zero trouble. Zero trouble. I believe you. I brought um, I brought my homework from high school with me. Uh, yeah, of course you did. Yeah. yeah. Um, you're a realtor, so no doubt there's a lot of late nights, early mornings. Still, you mm-hmm. didn't give that all up when you were done coaching and teaching at Steve But what is your uh, coffee shop of choice here in Missoula? Oh, I just loose caboose. I'm just a drive through. I'm a drive through guy. Sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Mullen, Mullen Road, coming down Mullen. Yeah. Are there the store the storage units? Yep. Those ones right there. Yep. That's the spot. It's a single line though. They only got one window. So so, so it gets backed up pretty good. If the, who if, if Luis Caboose is listening to this, we need to find a solution for Mullen <laughs> to get a double window going. I like it. <laughs> they put the roundabouts in. Now they need to yeah. fix the loose caboose. Yes, yes, yep. yes. Absolutely. How about when it comes to your food? Favorite restaurant in Missoula? My favorite restaurant in Missoula. Oh boy. Um I don't know. Is Jimmy John's a restaurant? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You sound like a high school basketball coach. Yeah. You sound like an efficiency guy. Yeah. I want a quick sandwich. I'm, I'm in that mode right now. You know, I grab a grab a sandwich, head to the gym, and and we're off. How many roll. times a week do you hit Jimmy John's? Oh, uh, at, at least twice. Okay. Yeah, at least twice. What what it's, what do you order there? Um, I either get the Cuban or the uh, the Country Club. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No efficiency problems with Jimmy John's. Do you want us to change their business? No, no, they're like, good. Freaky fast. Okay. Yeah. Freaky <laughs> fast. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You hear that, Liz Caboose? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listen up, Caboose. Uh, what zip code do you live in? Uh, 808. 808. Yep. All right. Yep. I'm Mullen. Yep. Um, what to you is the weirdest thing about Missoula? Um, the roads. Driving. You get that answer often. Yeah. The roads. Yeah bizarre yeah it is bizarre so if you're taking off from your house down mullen getting to the gym how long does that usually take you um anywhere from 17 to 40 minutes <laughs> depending on what time i leave yeah, yeah. That's i mean if it's if i can get to this end of town you know if i can hop in uh from my house at like two o'clock i'll be there in 17 minutes all the way to over to sentinel if i leave it Three thirty, like I'm, I'm pushing, making practice time by four fifteen. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, wow. Um, yeah. Um, what do you love the most about Missoula? Um, the way of life. Yeah, yeah. When you left Spokane, came here for college, did you think you were going to be here post college, or were you going to go back to Spokane? Do you have any clue? What I didn't. You I, didn't to do? I, I didn't think about it. Yeah. The, the the past is dead to me and the future is still black. Yeah, do you so. still have any idea what <laughs> no, you want to do no, when you grow no, up? No, You're still just no. figuring it out. I live in seven seven day increments. That's, That's awesome. it. That's so great. That's why you're so happy all the time. My, my wife will be like, hey, uh, you know, we got anything going on like May 21st? Like, May 21st? <laughs> I don't know. How about how about February 1st? <laughs> uh, all right, last question. Um, I wish I could live life like that. I know. Like, it's so it's amazing. Well, that's why he's always smiling. I know. He's always happy. Uh, what's uh, the most impactful book that you've read or something? It doesn't have to be. Or you can even go mentor somebody in your life or a book that has really changed. I'm I'm a people person. Uh, uh, I used to listen to some audio books, but, uh, you know, I'm, I'm more of a podcast guy. I like those kind of short snippets because um, my attention span doesn't uh, doesn't hang for that long. Um but my, my biggest mentor is probably my high school basketball coach. Yeah. Jamie Nillis is, uh, and John Graham too. John Graham, actually, I, I, he's the one that got me into real estate. Those two guys were incredible. Incredible. Yeah. They, uh, they took me under their wing, uh, and it wasn't easy. It wasn't, uh, they didn't white glove me. I mean, they, they pushed, they pushed and they mm-hmm. pushed on me. Um, and they demanded that I, you know, do the right things and, um, work hard in the off season and, um, they were supportive of, you know, my entire journey up into that point. And I still remember seeing them walking in the gym at, uh, you know, at my middle school games, you know, seeing those guys walk in and yeah, it was, they were, they were incredible guys. Mm. Yeah. It's amazing. All right, let's jump into real estate. So how'd you make the leap? Why'd you make the leap? And 
what was the biggest challenge for you? Yeah. So I, you know, I told you a little bit about, you know, why, why I needed a change out of education. Um, I didn't, I had no plan. I didn't know what to do. So I called John Graham, my high school basketball coach. And I said, I had, I had stayed in touch with him a little bit, but I didn't really know, you know, what he did for a career or, or whatnot. So I just called him one day, just ran, randomly and was like, coach, Hey, I'm, I've been doing this teaching thing and I need a change. I gotta, I gotta get out and do something different. And he was actually, um, the CEO of this big real estate team in Spokane. He was like, well, why don't you come over and um, see what this real estate thing's all about? You know, come to a team meeting and come meet the agents and see what's, see what's going on. And so I did it. And ironically, he is from Missoula. Uh, He's a, he's a big sky grad. Um, So all these, like all these different connection points, you know, between Missoula and Spokane, um, and so he said, you know, I always wanted to open up an office back in my hometown. I just haven't really focused on it or haven't found the right people. He's like, we could go down that path. That could be, you, you could help me with that. And I was like, all right, I don't know anything about <laughs> real estate at all, but you haven't steered me wrong yet, coach. So, uh, let's rock and roll. So I just did it. Day. Yeah. How long have you been in real estate now? Uh, eight years. Yeah. So, yeah, I was, I was, uh, it was nerve wracking. What was that first year like? Um, it was, it was hard. It was like, you know, it was like. You wanted be- to get back into teaching. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, was like, the it was like being in the trenches again, you know, yeah. I, I made a lot of dials, door knocked a lot of doors. Your, your red shirt year. Yeah. Yeah. That was my red shirt year. Uh, yeah. So, you know, obviously you have no, you have, you go from a little income to zero income until you, until you sell something. Um. And so, yeah, I just, just hustled, not knowing what was going to happen and just trusted the process. And you were here in Missoula alone, no other agent with you? Right. Wow. Yep. So you're yep. zooming in to team uh, yep. meetings and zooming in over into, driving into, over? into Spokane. Now, I, I only went over a couple times during the year. Mm-hmm. Um, it was all via Zoom. Yeah. Chiming in me and a, me and a cell phone and a laptop easy yeah uh, your family all still in the spokane area so yeah still home mm-hmm. uh how'd you and your wife meet is she from here yeah she's or no she's not from here she's from bemidji minnesota okay. and she was here on a golf scholarship oh wow so, so you guys met in college yeah yeah she was in the school business i was in the school business with the with my marketing stuff um and yeah i think we gosh trying to think back we must have lived close by each other early on because uh you know like our our household was was good friends with their household, you know, pretty much all the way through. Okay. Yeah. What street did you guys live in uh, on in college? Uh, we, we bounced around a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Got evicted from a few yeah. places. <laughs> we lived on Briggs street. That was our first house. Um, Kevin Corwin, uh, Kevin Corwin, Tyler Corwin, two brothers. Kevin was my age. Tyler Corwin was a couple years older. Uh, their folks bought a house here and we rented it from, from them. That's awesome. And we, eventually had to leave and find a new place. <laughs> we only cut down one fruit bearing tree, but that was the final straw. Sure. Only one. Only one. You know, what could fu- have been worse. You know, what's funny is uh, I have a freshman on my basketball team this year and uh, I was sitting in the gym and her dad, her dad, or I didn't know this, but you know, this guy walks up to me and says, Hey, uh, coach did, you know, introduce himself. I'm Mark Elliott. I'm Josie's dad. Did you, did you used to live over on uh Briggs street? I'm like, uh, <laughs> why, why are you asking? I don't know. Nope. Uh, no, no, nope. no, nope. no, me. You're the wrong guy. Uh, I said, yeah. He goes, yeah, I was your neighbor and we had helped him. Uh, we got to know him a little bit because he had built this big custom concrete, um, countertop and he had helped getting it down to his basement and it was heavy and awkward. And so, he came, knocked on our door. We all picked it up, took it down there, and then you know got to know him a little bit. And I was like, "Oh, that's right." He goes, "You, you guys were actually awesome neighbors." He's like, "We were, we were nervous when we saw you move in, but thank you, you guys did a good job." So, <laughs> those are those are the stories you don't want your kids to to, to yeah, hear. Your yeah. basketball players, yeah. the college years. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, what what do you love about real estate 
eight years in. Um, why are you still doing it? And what's been um, successful for you? Yeah, it's challenging. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you get out of it what you put into it. Um, I love the fact that I'm in, in control. Um, I love help, helping my friends. And, you know, you meet a lot of cool people along the way um, through referrals and um, just the variety of ways that, that you come up with new business. Um, and I love the flexibility. Um, but the flexibility is a hard thing, right? Because you can, you can be too flexible with yourself mm -hmm. and not do any work mm -hmm. and then you have no business. Um, and so, yeah, just, just being able to, you know, bet on yourself. Um, and you kind of, you know, reap what you sow. I mean, I love that, that, that part of the, of the business. Yeah. You actually changed my life. For this reason, I'm going to tell you, uh, we were refing an AAU tournament together. I was in the school of education, wanted to become a teacher just so I could coach. And I remember you telling me your experience, you said, man, it's tough. It's hard to eat being a teacher. And <clears throat> you said, what's, what I don't like about it is the guy down the hall might not be working as hard as you, but you guys are making the same or you're probably making less because he's been there for 25 years. Mm-hmm. And I took that, I'll never forget those words. And I got out of the education program that day. Yeah. And so, um, I remember I'm, that conversation now that you bring it up. Yeah. So I'm, I'm so glad, you know, being a teacher is awesome yeah. and, and people are called to that and they're such a great investment, but for a guy like you that wants to have a little bit more control and competitive, mm -hmm. uh, it sounds like you found the right fit. Yeah, totally. And I still get my, I still get my fill with the coaching yeah. piece of it. Yeah. Yeah. So do you, do you have something for me? No, it's cause it's funny just having Tyler here. I feel like my and Tyler's past have crossed multiple times yeah. for the last decade or so. I remember, I, I could be wrong on the details, but I, I, I clearly remember, it's funny, all three of us have officiated and all three of us have coached. <laughs> I was officiating, I want to say I was with Craig Sear and Jake Jessup, Stevensville Hamilton in steve -I. And a kid from Stevensville, and you guys are officials, you can tell me if this rule is inaccurate. A kid from Stevensville jumped up inadvertently and grabbed the rim during the game, and I called a technical on him. I don't know if you recall this. Hobbs went nuts on me. It was like, what? And I'm like, no, like, the, you cannot grab the rim during play, like, period. And then I remember at halftime, Sear being like, great call. It was exactly right. And like, I was like, oh, okay. So, Suddenly, I was the young guy on that crew. Do you remember that? <laughs> I, uh, a little Vaguely. bit, yeah. Yes. And so then yes. I was like, dang. Hobbs. I don't remember. I, I didn't like, remember Hobbs. it was a rim grab, though. I was like, Hobbs hates me. Like, <laughs> like this is it forever. Like, because then you officiate and you know, like, you're going into a game in the gym and past experience. Um, but then past continued to cross. And then both of us were in projects where homes were being built and mm -hmm. actually lived down the street. We were in little townhouses for a season while we're both building and just past continued to cross. And so, no, I love you yeah. that you're here and just here in the back end of your story. Like I've known you, known who you are, know yeah. a lot about you, but I've never really got to dive right. deep. So no, appreciate this. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys. Thank you. Um, since we're in the middle of basketball season right now, we, yeah. we probably should ask you some coaching questions. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Um, so what, what's it like at Sentinel? Um, and you went from coaching boys, yeah. basketball and football. Yeah. So what maybe are some of the main differences between coaching boys that you're probably used to, and then now, transitioning into girls what that's yeah. what's that been like i mean shoot i think uh is one easier than the other from your perspective no to coach no 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 they're uh it's it's the same game the kids make the same mistakes you fight the same battles um you know it's just uh it's just different between you know male and female you know the, the guys play up at the rim a little bit more and uh and the gals don't you know um you know there's maybe a little more you know, a little more one-on-one -on -one, um, with the guys where, um, you know, the girls are, are, you know, execute probably better than the boys a lot, you know, because they, they, they have to. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know. I was, I was nervous going into the girl side, you know, I, when I got out of, when I got out of education, I, I quit coaching for a year and was, uh, was an official, as you mentioned. Um, and then, yeah, Karen Deaton called me. So Craig Mettler, who I played with, um, played uh, D line with at the at the Grizz. He was at Sentinel. Um, he was teaching and coaching, and he's now uh, an assistant principal. But 
he must have talked to Karen um, and gave her my contact info because she was looking for a JV coach. So she calls me up and gosh, we must have talked for an hour on the phone. And I was like, wow, this is incredible. Like this woman knows basketball. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I knew who she was. And I knew her resume, but she knew she knows basketball. Um, mm-hmm. She lives, eats, breeds it. So I was like, all right, like, let's, let's give this, let's give this thing a shot. And um, yeah, I was nervous. I didn't, I never, I'd never coach girls, but I've, I've grown to love it. You know, they, they work hard, they listen, uh, they, they try and execute what you're asking them to do. Um, some of them are stubborn. Some of them are uh, bullheaded and um, some of them are ultra motivated. Some of them you got to push a little bit, yeah. you know, it's just, it's the same, it's the same deal. So you, you know? so you took the JV job? So I took the JV Sentinel? job at Sentinel with Karen. And then you got the varsity job at Big Sky. Right, right, right. Yeah, it was kind of a kind of an interesting yeah. series of events. She retired to go watch her daughter play at Tech. So her daughter, Chalice, um, is playing still for uh, Montana Tech. Gotcha. So she retired um, just that year that she, her last year, um, Sarah Pfeiffer came in as like a volunteer assistant, but she was also teaching. Um, and so they, through the interview process, they ended up hiring Sarah. Um, and rightfully so, like I'm a, I'm a believer that, you know, you, you want to get more of your staff members involved in your extracurriculars. So regardless, I mean, and she has a, an unbelievable resume too. I mean, she played at Arkansas. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, so I was going to, I was going to step away again at that point um, and just focus on my family. Um, and then, I've, but of course I had, I still had a lot of connections over at, over at Big Sky. And so, um, yeah, Matt Johnson, the their football coach over there, a good friend of mine, you know, he was like, what do you, what do you think? You know, like we're, we're looking for a coach too, because that was a time when uh, Jesse Sims had just passed away and Jace Henderson was their coach. Mm-hmm. And she, she stepped away in like October, I think, September maybe. Um, she was going to try and tough it out, and just of course you can't you can't blame her after oh. losing her fiance like that. Um, so she stepped away kind of at the last minute. So Big Sky was scrambling to uh, to get a coach, and gosh, I thought long and hard about it, and talked to my wife about it, and I was like, you know, I'm I wasn't expecting this, but I don't know if I'm ready to fully step away. And so I did that. I took that job. And then, of course, the next year, Sentinel opens back up. So you a big say just one year? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah I was. <laughs> and they were good, too. You know, like they got, they got good. They got talented kids over there, you know. Um, yeah. So that was, a, that was a tough decision, too. It was really tough. What was the draw to Sentinel? Um, the adults, not the kids. Yeah. You know, um, I, I, I know a lot of the staff members over there. I'm friends with a lot of the people in the athletic department. Um, I believe in what they're doing from a strength conditioning standpoint, uh, with their summer program and, um, you know, what they're doing from with the classes. Um, I believe in that. I think they do an unbelievable job. Um, and I got a ton of respect for Karen Deaton. Like she, she's a, she's an amazing woman. I mean, if you haven't been able to spend an hour with her, you should, because she can, she, she eats, drinks, sleeps, lives, everything basketball. Um, she's an amazing mentor to kids. She's devoted her life to, to Sentinel and to the, to the kids in that community. How often do you talk to her, reach out to her as a, I got her back on staff mentor. Oh, you really didn't know know that. Yeah. Good for you. Yeah. She's, uh, she's, she's volunteering for us this year. (laughs) Yeah. I'm but, sure that's not intimidating at all to be in the locker room telling your girl something, knowing she's yeah, listening yeah. and being like, Nuh-uh, well, no, no, well, no. What's awesome is when, uh, when both of us have a, a thought that, or an idea that aligns, it's probably going to be a good one. Yeah. yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. Well, good for you. So, yeah. Um, one of the, one of the challenges and maybe blessings that I've found mm-hmm. being a coach is, and not being an admin is being away from the school during the day is kind of nice, but. There are some challenges. So what what's, what has been that difference from being a teacher to just being a realtor slash coach? Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's pros and cons, right? Um, you know, I'm not in the building, so I don't have things that affect my mindset, um, right, wrong, or indifferent towards uh, a kid 
because of because of what they're doing in school. But at the same time, I don't have those teachable moment opportunities to be like, hey, you yeah. need to get back from from lunch on time. You need to get to your fourth period on time. Otherwise, there's gonna be consequences on the on the basketball court. Um, yeah. And so you don't you don't get those touch points um, by being in the school. Um, so that's what's amazing about having Karen on staff. She's in the school half the day. And so she can track down some of these kids that we need to, you know, put our arm around and and say, hey, we need you. We need you to do X, Y, X, Y, and Z yeah. um, because you're you're not doing the right things right now or or whatever the case may be. Maybe it's something as simple as just like, you know, tracking down a kid because, you know, they uh, they got blood on their jersey last game and they got a new number and you got to swap it back out, mm-hmm. you know, and saying, Hey, make sure you, make sure you get to the equipment room right after school. So we can, we can swap that out, you know, just logistical things like yeah. that, you know, makes it hard from afar sometimes. It's awesome. Well, unless you got anything else, Brandon, I know your schedule is busy Hobbs. Um, appreciate you and best of luck with the, yeah. tur- the tournaments and, and getting ready for that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for investing in this community, man. Yeah. I appreciate you. Appreciate yeah, you guys. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Appreciate it. What's up Missoula. This is Nick Bala, producer of the Missoula podcast. We truly appreciate you hanging out with us as we dive into the stories that make our city special. If you could do us a quick favor and follow the show, wherever you are listening, whether that's on Spotify, Apple podcasts, Maybe you're watching on YouTube, so hit that little subscribe button. It really helps us out. Head on over to www.themissoulapodcast.com for more information, and we'll see you next week.